All right, students. So let's uh, move on to date and time function. These date and time function are majorly applicable to uh, the columns which are more related to date. And uh, generally, such kind of columns are you would have seen in certain data sets or perhaps in your billing that uh, there is something like date followed by, for example, the time at which the purchase was made, especially in the sales transactions, right? So in such kind of columns, there are certain date and time function that we can use because at times it might so happen that we might require only a certain portion of that entire column, not the entire column in itself. Without wasting any time, let's take an example over here. Let me actually first move on to the syntax and then we'll move on to the examples, right? Again, the syntax starts from selecting the column names, of course. And then if you go for first date and time function is year and date column. This is going to fetch only the year of that particular date. Right, this is going to display only the year of that particular date, and then you can move on to the closing the query by inputting the table name from which you're doing this. Right, then similarly, next function is of course month date column. This is going to fetch only the month of that particular year. Complete the table. Right, these are the syntax is very simple as you can see, it's just month parenthesis inside the parenthesis, the name of the column where the date is contained. Okay, and then finally, we can go for day and it displays the day of that particular month. There are certain other functions as well, date and time functions, we'll just look into them, right? There are more functions like minute parenthesis, the date and time column is going to give you the minute at which specific minute at which the purchase is made. Similarly, R is going to give you the specific R and second, in fact, for some reason, you want the second on which the purchase is made that can also be derived from the information. You can also add two dates over here or rather add certain number of days to a certain day. For example, uh, you want to add an ideal shipping date from the purchase date. For example, you want the shipping to be in the next three days. So you can say the maximum shipping date, ideal maximum shipping date should be three days after the purchase date, right? If you want something like this, you can actually create by using a particular function called as date adds. Now date adds is having a bit of syntax difference over here. That date add, you need to mention the date, the interval right you have to mention this particular uh, function interval and then provide the value and then provide the unit value is how many days you want to add unit is days if you want to add an hour you can add an hour if you want to add week you can add week and so on like that right so date add functions are there date subtract functions absolutely date subtract it's just date add it's going to add a certain number of days to a certain date date subtract is going to take it back, right? And similarly, there's something called as date diff in which we can very comfortably syntax is there in front of you. Date diff is nothing but taking difference between two dates and date and start date indicate that it's first minus the second date is the difference which is going to be reflected in this particular function. Apart from this, apart from minute, hour, second, year, month and day, it can also reflect the week number. It can also reflect the week day on which it is done and plenty of things can be done, right? So let's see that how it reflects in SQL, right? All right, fellas, I'll use another file here. Let me use some other database. Now let me use Sakila database here and I'll just use this one cool and then in this particular database i think i found one column over here let's look at the address and if i select star from address and let me have a look into this column all right okay there is something difference over here but i think here we need to focus on the last update column here right we'll just focus on the last update column or probably will not go for this we'll just go for last update right and we'll just have the date over here right now we can do a number of things for example if i want to have the let me keep the last update and i'll just copy this right i want only the year of last update if i do that i can do that now year last update is not a good name of the column so i'll go for as year right so the year in which the purchase is made will be reflected over here now if you go for month and i'll go for month over here right and run it it's going to give me the month of purchase similarly for day it's going to reflect the day of that particular purchase. As you can see, 25, 9, 2014, we can disintegrate 25, 9, and 14. And uh, if I take it further, if I want to go for, let's say, R, and I'll go for R, right? R, it's going to reflect the R in which the purchase was made. So 22, 13, 27, 
specific hour of purchase here right so i'll just go for similarly we can go for minute i'll not change the name of this now please be attentive this is min is going to reflect the minimum of the date over here right so it has to be entire minute all right so it has to be minute and as uh minute right similarly it can do for second now i'll not change the time now i'll not change the column name right so it a specific second in which the purchase is made can also be seen over here we can also look at the week right so once you type week a lot of things will come over here week of the year if we select week of the year is going to reflect the week of the year which week right for example 25 9 falls on 39th week over here right and as we keep on going down in fact uh, it seems to be all last updates are done in this so let me change the database over here all the columns are of the same date i probably will try and find out a column where the dates are different okay it probably might be happening over here as well, right so i'll just do it here that select star from actor and let me see if it's happening here all right so this is well, all of them are of the same date or what i just wanted different dates here but unfortunately all of them are of the same date here so no worries but uh point is we'll be able to i'll go for last update here again now with last update and if i just copy this last update we can do a number of things right we already seen that we can see we of year which week are we talking about right if i run this it's going to show me which week are we talking about as feb 15th feb is the seventh week of the year it's going to give me the seventh week and we can of course give the alias name over here so it is week similarly if i go for let's say week day right if i go for week day it's going to give me the day of the week over here for example it falls the second day i mean zero is sunday first is monday two is tuesday it's all the updates were done on a specific tuesday all these you know functions of date and time can be used to extract specific information from the date column right it is handy for certain cases when you have to do analysis year by year wise analysis or month wise analysis or let's say you want to see which day of a specific month the sales are highest or certain thing is highest you can do all that kind of stuff using these functions in sql one thing i forgot to mention in is that we can use the date add function as well i mean apart from week of year and weekday function we can have a column over here as something like last update last update is the original date and now i'm adding date add over here and last update interval seven days as new date so i'll just run this so you'll understand that there'll be a new update column automatically created days of which will be seven days ahead of this we can change this we can make it seven let's say 70 hours right and if i run this the new date created the new column created over here called as new update will have time 70 hours ahead of the time mentioned over here so you can see 70 hours will be almost three days ahead so there should be 18 and uh 234 perhaps somewhere around that right so yes it is 18 234 right so it is 70 hours ahead similarly if i use another function over here i think i just copied it here right and date sub is that particular function in fact i'll just use last update as well and put a comma date sub last update date interval seven days right so as old update so now if i run this query it's going to create another column okay it's not taking last update is there's no last update over here why is it not taking last update okay as old update from actor forgot the name of the table right so once i run this i'll have last update and old update old update being a date which is seven days lesser or seven days ago seven days behind the last update date over here right we can also go for perhaps let's give it a try over here only that we can go for date diff date diff between let's say last update and new update okay and if i just run this let's see what gets created new update field is not yet recognized over here because new update comes here or probably i'll let me give it a try to old update if i run this it still is giving me the error because old update is just a alias over here so i'll have to in fact put in the entire if i just put in this entire stuff there 
instead of old update. Let's see whether this works or not. Should work. Now, if I do this, the date difference and the state difference as date underscore difference. Right, let me enter over here so that you can see the entire query. Now, if I run this entire query, so what I've done is I've created a lot of columns. So I'll, I'll just accumulate the entire work at one place and I'll just do like this. I'll take this new update front and put it over here, put a comma. And now if I run the query, you can see that from the last update column update, I've created a new update column, an old update column by adding days or hours or whatever unit you want. It's just that the unit has to be same as the input quantity. And then I have created a difference between the date, right? Uh, between, uh, it is the, the date difference was between here, yeah. I think the date difference was between the last update and the old update, right? So yeah, so date difference of seven came into the picture over here. So this is what we can do with date time function, guys. You can do n number of things from one single column in date and time.